What's that smell? Just like cornbread done to well. Good evening, Metal Faithful. It is I, your mandated reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Radulich. And this here is the Metal Hammer of Doom. Joining me tonight is my brother from another mother, Mr. Essential, Jesse Starcher. How do you do, sir? I do very well, Mark Radulich. I'm glad to be back here on the Metal Hammer of Doom. And again, we are, uh, I don't want to say like traveling into uncharted waters, but this is, this is a little off the beaten path. Uh, compared to what we've done in the past. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm excited, man. Yep. Uh, tonight, I turn the reins over, not to Jesse, because he can't be trusted. Um, we'll end up listening to some weird math core <laughs> band or something. Oh, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> math core is where we go all the time now, because, you know. Uh, no, in, no, instead, um, a little girl with a, with a little curl came up to me, and she said, Mr., Mr., would you be so kind as to talk about this one guy, this one band, on the Metal Hammer of Doom? And I said, sure, little girl. I would absolutely talk about your band. We'd be happy to listen to songs from this band. And the little girl said, no, but she won't. And I said, but I will. And the little girl said, no, you don't ever listen to me. And after an hour and a half of this, I finally just threw myself on the floor, laid dead. And the little girl transformed into a large beast. And that beast put his foot on my chest, planted a flag in my face, and said, Galactokraken, motherfucker. And that beast, ladies and gentlemen, is Robert Winfrey. How do you do, sir? Okay, that's not at all how it happened, but now I really... <laughs> hang on. But now I, I was really, there. Now I really wish it had. <laughs> that's so say, the, the story. The story sounded familiar, but I, I don't recall those events at all. I, yeah, I, I wish that I had been able to knock you over, stick a flag in your mouth, and remove your tongue to just thus alleviate your pain. No. Yeah. While screaming Galactokraken. <laughs> epic. That would, it would have been just the best podcast setup ever, but... <laughs> Galactokraken, you, the new bonsai. For the record, uh, that's not quite how it happened. We were winding down from a podcast with the three of us, and Mark was going over the schedule... And he said, so we've got yeah, this stuff on the Metal Hammer of Doom that I'm not too thrilled about. And my response, because I am a helpful soul, <laughs> I, I may be mostly dead inside, but I do genuinely try to help. I said, well, if you're interested, I've got something that I would be, that I've got an idea for you. And he said, well, okay, tell me. So I pitched it to him and he said, yeah, sure, that sounds good. You're doing, and you get to do everything related to this. And I went, wait, what? I said, <laughs> And he has for the ne- and he has for the ensuing weeks gone. Hey, don't forget, you're doing this, <laughs> which I I don't object to at all. But <laughs> is a, I, you went from passively antagonistic to a bit more aggressively passively <laughs> aggressively antagonistic. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's me, passively aggressively antagonistic. Um, all right, so uh, so Galactic Kraken is actually a dude. Uh, tell us about Jonathan Young. So I'm not an expert, but just from from my experience, yeah, Galactic Kraken is. I believe it's actually listed frequently whenever you happen to see it uh, as it's written, produced, and performed by Galactic Kraken. Totally not Jonathan Young pretending to be a band. <laughs> so this is kind of like Death Clock, where it's really just one guy, and then when he goes out on tour, they hire studio musicians, and then they just broadcast the uh, the cartoon band from from the show. 
Uh, isn't it Tool that does kind of the same thing? That's actually like just Trent Reznor, and then when he uh, <laughs> when he tours, he hires other people to play instruments. Okay, well, Tool is not Nine Inch Nails. Those are two different. Okay, things. Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, I can. Those two I confuse all the time. And I've never seen Nine Inch. And I've seen Nine Inch Nails in concert a few times. So maybe that's happened in the past. But I've never seen him do that. I've, Trent Reznor is always front and center. No, 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 he's always there, but he's the. But like when it's just you know the recording, it's him. It's only ever him doing all the instruments, and then whenever he tour, whenever Nine Inch Nails tours, he hires a bit, he hires other people. Um, th- yeah, I'm sure that's ebbed and flowed over the years. I'm sure there have been like people in and out of the band, people that you know he thought were going to stay in the band but didn't stay in the band, etc. Kind of, yeah. Ministry and, and Skinny Puppy are kind of the same thing. KMFDM, where people have kind of floated in and out of all these bands. Um, you know, one minute somebody's in the band the next minute they're not and you know but the stuff gets released under the same name yeah so anyway um jonathan young gained a bit of notoriety and success on youtube for his uh covers he did a lot of he did two things that gained him i think his most attention uh one being english version uh covers of anime opening songs some of which are quite uh, very well done. I may or may not in the past have synced up some of his songs and then muted the show I was watching to listen to them over the opening credits. <laughs> nice. I have no regrets about doing that on occasion, by the way. Uh, and Disney rock covers. He does... So, any any famous Disney song, pretty much, he's probably got some rock or metal cover of it. Uh, some of which are quite... He's released a couple of albums like that. In fact, he has one that is uh, every villain cover he's ever done which covers all of his Disney songs as well as a bunch of other animated stuff. Uh, like stuff from DreamWorks and... I think it was DreamWorks. So, again, he's done a lot of stuff like that. He's a very talented guy, and like most talented creative types, when you gain notoriety and spend years doing riffs on other people's work, you get creatively stifled. And you need an outlet. In his case, he's I forget exactly how long he's been working on this, but he poured all of his genuine creative efforts into what was released on April 3rd, 2021, the 11 11 track album Starship Velociraptor, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight. It is a wonderful uh, genre blending, infusing, and occasionally defying mix of rock, a little bit of various metal subgenres. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun and it's it's one of those things that gets done by someone and this is not unique to him. Uh, plenty of other artists who again spend a lot of time doing other people's stuff. Eventually their creativity needs an outlet and they produce something that is zany and off the wall and kind of great. I will tell you that most likely that when this was pitched to Mark Usually you throw something at Mark and you're like, hey, you want to check this out? You know, but first his eyebrow raises a little bit and he's like, oh, well, you know, he's kind of a skeptic uh, at first. But then we went over to the Spotify and looked at the track listing and the names of the tracks probably immediately sold him. None other than the fact that this is called Starship Velociraptor. <laughs> that is a great title for an album uh, but when we go through when we go through the tracks just the name of the tracks you're like oh okay we've got to check this out but, so, i get the feeling jesse that the one that jumped out to you was army of tigers <laughs> uh it jumped out to me twice when i first saw it and then when i was listening to it again today i was like what is this song and i was like oh okay that makes sense <laughs> there's some good stuff on here i can't wait to talk about it all right, so let's get into the first three songs here. Uh, we've got Glory or Gold, Best Band in the Universe, and Settle It with a Sword Fight.
Oh my god, that is the best thing ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can I look. I don't pitch you a whole lot of stuff. That's because when I do pitch you something, I want it to uh, I want it to stick in your head. And I I haven't thrown you a whole lot. I haven't thrown you under the bus as far as that goes. I've never I've not thrown a hand grenade at you. No, so. you've not you've not you've not reffened me. That's that seems to be my department. <laughs> that, that is true. Get in my van, children. Oh God, it's French noir. Um. <laughs> Please no, let me out. <laughs> uh, let's. So let me start with you then, Mark. You you seem to enjoy our first three songs here. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that "Settle It with a Sword Fight" is the one that you kind of you kind of rock out to the most from those three. Once again, you are incorrect. Oh, oh. best band oh, in the universe. Then. Best band in the universe, <laughs> baby. You, write that down, Jesse. That's going on the the year end list. Added right now. It is added right now. Best band in the. I mean. Like, it has that, like, Steel Panther self-referential element to it, but it's also, like, a rockin', th- thrashy, progressive, good tune. And Settle It With A Sword Fight's great, too. Don't get me wrong. I love Settle It With A Sword Fight. I love the idea of it. Um, I can tell this guy, you know, you talked about, like, he was doing anime covers and stuff like that. Like, this is straight out of that kind of milieu. Uh, and it's great. Like oh, these first three songs are a strong start here, and I and you know, I, I don't I trust you. You know, and if we're being serious, if you tell me, hey, I think you should check this out. I think you'll like it. I don't think it'll be like, oh God, you know, like you know, I'm gonna open this thing and it's something I wouldn't like. You know, oh look, it's people being tortured. Um, I was gonna say something else. I'm like, no. If he gave me a box full of like you know pictures of male dicks, I'd be like, I'd laugh. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you give me a box, you give me a box full of like you know hostile and saw images. I'm like, Ooh, no, um, please you don't. know, what was that, Jesse? I said, please don't. Yeah, you know, oh, oh look, it's Nightmare on Elm Street three where the kid got made into a puppet. Yuck! Ew! No, ah, love it. that is such a great sequence, though. I know it is, <laughs> but um. So no, I don't. I you're not going to purposely lead me astray. That's a you know not your bag. B, you know if you're pitching something to me, you te- it's because you want to turn me on to something, not because you're trying to purposely like get my goat. So like I trust that if you're like, hey, you should check out Jonathan Young and this fake band that he created, Galactic Crack, and it's right in your wheelhouse. Uh, you're you're. I mean that you're dead on with. This is. I mean, we talked earlier today, Jesse, um, Robert, and I did. Because we uh, we reviewed uh, Castlevania season four, and we were just hap- we happened to be talking about this for a moment, and I said, and, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, as this album starts to un- un- uh, unravel, um, I got a lot of like Dragon Force feel from this. Like this is very to oh, me, yeah. this is very Dragon Force influenced. Yeah, there's just in these first three songs. So, uh, best band in the universe is probably my favorite as well of the three we just listened to. Uh, specifically for the fact that we get this just incredible song there's is so much tongue in cheek humor throughout the whole song it's hilarious but my favorite part is at the end when ninja brian shows up <laughs> and, does and i mean yeah it's like you know they're getting ready to bring on this epic guy they're doing this huge introduction and it's like ninja brian and then he just starts playing some of the most i mean it's it, yeah it's polka it's do you crazy want, do you want me to go back and play it do you know about where where it is in the song oh it's near the end but it's i can't even end. it's right at i just want to say it all right give me a second it's very close you can keep talking for a minute but give me a second see if, let me see if i can find it Okay. The other two things, uh, the other two songs, Glory or Gold or Se- and Settle It with a Sword Fight, uh, there's one thing that we uh, we really gravitate towards here on the Metal Hammer of Doom, and that's pirate metal. Now, All there's right. not a, yeah, there's not a lot of pirate metal like you you can't feel the classic kind of pirate metal that we're used to in those two songs. But if you look at it lyrically, it's pirate metal all over. I mean, uh, g- the last. G- give it a bit. We'll we'll get to we'll get to a. Uh, oh, I know. Later. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a song coming up that is very Alestorm influenced. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, okay, Mark, go, go ahead, go ahead, and take it from here. Wow. 
Wow. Yep. <laughs> that, dude, and it's so funny because the song is just incredible. And then, at the, you know, when they're hyping Ninja Brian to show up and you get that, it's like you're not let down. You're expecting it because if you're a fan of Ninja Brian, which I've just kind of looked over his Wikipedia, this, <laughs> I, I mean, the, what was the first album called? Ninja Sex Party? So, um, uh, or maybe, I, I, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, he's a part of Game Grumps as well. I, I don't know if you watch that. I know a couple people on the network have mentioned the Game Grumps before. But uh, anyway, it's just hilarious. So, But it's a great song uh, in and of itself. I really do like it. But I, of, of, the, of these three, uh, I would say we got a great start going to the album. And it's a lot. I know we're in for a lot of fun, at least with those leading the pack. Yeah, uh, Glory or Gold is, like you mentioned, it's a very, in fact, they very specifically mention, you know, that's it's pirates in outer space. <laughs> yes. It's, we've, you know, we have, uh, we are here for freedom and adventure and damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. It's the big ego trip and jokes that come out of best band in the universe. And I, I've constantly kind of bopped my head towards, uh, uh, like, unconsciously to the beat that Settle It With a Sword fight has, because... Who doesn't want to settle it with a sword fight on occasion? <laughs> <laughs> just, just whip them out and go at it. Uh, yeah. It, it's a really, it's a strong three set of opening. And interestingly enough, our next three set starts with a much more, uh, I wouldn't say downer because it's not a downer, but it's, uh, you, you'll hear, our next three are Hyperspeed, the aforementioned Army of Tigers, and Storm the Castle. Mark? All right, here we go.
So remember last night, Jesse, we were talking about we were talking to Ronnie about like music for D and D. Oh yeah, <laughs> send him Storm the Castle right now. <laughs> uh, Here you go, sir. <laughs> Storm the Castle is the. There's another. I think there's another one on here. I might be. I might be mistaken as I go back to these in my head. Uh, that's your Sabaton influenced song of this particular album. Yeah, I could see that. And I think I don't mean that as a negative at all. Um, so we got a different set of three songs here. We have Hyperspeed, which is. It, while it's up tempo, it's a little bit more subdued and is really just the kind yeah. of song that a, a starship pilot sings to his ship, you know, that kind of sequence. Here, here's yep. my problem with Hyperspeed. This is such an outlandish album with such funny lyrics. This Hyperspeed, you use the word subdued. I would say it lacks the character of everything else we've heard so far. Everything else we've heard so far has has been great and epic, and I love it, but it's also had kind of a comedic tone to it. Whereas Hyperspeed sounds like every other band in this genre, uh, without being partic- without being particularly standoutish. Uh, I, I see what you mean. Though. That's fair. And then Jesse, the man <laughs> wants to send an army of a billion tigers to die horribly fighting the sun. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I so there's one thing I love about you know songs like this the the, the storytelling that goes into uh, a, a lot of the lyrics it, if it can leave me wanting to know more you know that has done its job in my opinion does he explain how he gets the army of tigers no I want a graphic novel okay. I, need, I need somebody standing <laughs> looking into you know an army of like zombies or robots or aliens whatever you, you pick, take your pick from the Marvel movies and uh, and you know and like just a guy standing, staff in hand. He's at a cliff face, and he's just like, "I command an army of tigers," and just tigers come out of a portal and mess everything up. I don't know if they're anthropomorphic tigers or if they are <laughs> just straight up tigers. Uh, I get, I, you know, I get this idea of that one guy from uh, Wing Commander. I can't remember. He looked like half tiger, half humanoid. No, no, whatever. I, I, the the bad guys in the Wing Commander franchise were. Uh, feline in, uh, yes. in inspiration. Okay. So I want to know more about plus that song kicks all sorts of ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we talked about the, you know, some of the humor that happened in the first three songs. I, I would say that these three songs really pick up the more serious nature of the album. Uh, granted army of tigers sounds hilarious, but if you look at it and listen to what they're saying, I mean, this is warfare, sir. <laughs> you know, there is there is some stuff going on. Uh, and somehow he commands the land, sea, and air with these uh, tigers. Can you but, imagine, uh, like, sword- tigers that can leap so high in the, in the sky they can take down, like, jets and shit? Uh, dude, I mean, you want a graphic novel, I'm right there with you. Put it, put it on <laughs> Kickstarter right now. Um, yeah, there's tigers, like, diving into the water, taking out submarines. Like, oh, my God, <laughs> we're taking on water. Rawr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> And again, then of course, storm the castle, which is again Sabaton influenced in terms of its uh, stylistic presentation, and is kind of a straightforward. Uh, uh, hey, Je- hey Jesse, music- how many people do you want to die in this video? Yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's no, no, that, that, that's a, I appreciate that. Uh, I mean, storm the castle is kind of the typical. If we're talking thematically, it's the fairly typical "down with the man" seg- song of this mm-hmm. particular album, but it's presented in an interesting way, and I, I love this style. That uh, I love that style of music. I enjoy Sabaton a lot, so uh, it's a really, it's, again, it's a really solid three set. Again, I, I kind of, I'm kind of with you in that hyperspeed is a little bit more the kind of generic one, but given the strength of everything else I'll allow it and we've got a really nice three set to follow it up with too so if you got anything else on those three if not Mark send us on the way with Starship Velociraptor Man the Cannons and Jetpack Race well before we do I, I often say Robert Winfrey and Jesse Starcher that sometimes you know the lyrics on these albums they could use some work you know they oh. could, uh, they you, could... Are the, you are the critique you are the criticism of art <laughs> you, and I you, say, you look at what other people pour their passions into and go, but sir, don't you understand if you had help in the writing process? Yes. It could be better. 
I, I'm just saying, you're, you're never quite done. Life is a draft, and you just keep working on your draft, you know? And so maybe if you had a tool to help you write better, you would compose some better songs. And in this if particular... If only there were a tool. If only there were some service that would uh, that I could maybe download onto my computer to assist me in my writing. There is! <laughs> oh my gra- gosh. <laughs> it's Grammarly. Grammarly's AI-powered products help people communicate more effectively. Grammarly helps you write mistake-free on Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and nearly anywhere else you write on the web. Grammarly corrects hundreds of grammar, punctuation, and spelling mistakes while also catching contextual errors, improving your vocabulary, and suggesting style improvements. It won't heal your infected tongue, but it will help you with all those other things. So at least when someone else reads your writing, they won't, they won't read it with a terrible lisp, like I have. Well, you know... <laughs> If you're doing voice to text, though, mm-hmm. it could catch, it could jump right in there and help you out with them <laughs> S's, Mark Radlitz. You're absolutely right. <clears throat> to download Grammarly today, go to uh, go to getgrammarly.com slash W2M Network. Again, that's getgrammarly.com slash W2M Network to download Grammarly for free. All right. As Robert Winfrey just mentioned, we've got a next set of three songs for you. Here we go. This is Starship Velociraptor, followed by Man the Cannons, and then Jetpack Race. Treasure 
Uh, yes, now. Did someone say pirate metal? Holy cow, man the cannons. Yeah. Man the <laughs> cannons. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, again, that's very obviously a bit of Ailstorm and uh, other pirate metal influence into that particular one, which is fine by me. It's a great tune. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it, it it might get my pick off of here uh, just because of it's it's the most familiar I feel with some of the tunes that are off of here, uh, and I'm a big fan of pirate metal myself. Um, See, I really totally thought like... you were going to go with Starship Velociraptor because it had that glory hammer feel. So there is a lyric when I heard Starship Velociraptor <laughs> earlier today, I was like, certainly he didn't say that. He probably and did. <laughs> so I'm going to read it to you here. I have it here in front of me, at least Bandcamp's rendition of what these lyrics are, and I'm, I imagine they are correct, but uh, I'll blame it on the website if they're not. So here we go. Uh, it says, it's as you as you're let's try this again and as you're sailing on through starlight you're quite convinced that this is it it's got a dozen restrooms inside in case we all have to sit on the comfy leather seats yep <laughs> <laughs> i was like I, you know i had to stop uh because i i love I, I obviously the first three songs they set the tone where i was like okay i know we're going to get some humor in this it's not uh it doesn't it isn't completely overwhelming the album with just how funny it is. This isn't Weird Al, but there is some very hilarious parts in here, and the way that he l writes the lyrics uh, makes me pay attention. So, but yeah, Starship Velociraptor, it's good, but man, the cannons, man, man, the cannons. It's it's uh, it's a solid it's a solid uh, pirate metal song in my opinion. Uh, Starship Velociraptor is is hilarious, especially when it helps you kind of when you kind of realize it's. It's a sales pitch. Yeah. They, 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 yeah. There's a bit in there where he talks about, yeah, and, you know, we've got this extended warranty. It's basically mm. free. <laughs> it, it, that's what, and it's, again, it's it's hilarious if you've ever been sold something or had to talk with, you know, salesmen of that, on that level. Um, you know, Man the Cannons is straightforward, kick-ass pirate metal. And Jetpack Race is... Uh, this was the one that he released ahead of the show, ahead of the album, as an animated single on YouTube. I, it's still up there if you want to see the animation that goes along with it. Oh, cool! It's, I mean this in the best way possible. It's arcade music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it and it's awesome arcade music. It's not the cheesy arcade music that you kind of just oh that's going to be there. No, but this one comes on, you're banging along with it. It's. It's a lot of, it's all, of, and if we talk about thematically, it's about, you know, trying to find the joy in life uh, through the drudgery. And maybe you find, maybe for you that happens to be strapping a jetpack onto your back and... <laughs> Take it off. And joining an underground racing scene. <laughs> it's, it, I will say... It's a lot of fun. Jetpack race really made me appreciate the musicianship that he possesses. I mean, if you listen to that songs, there are a lot of layers and specifically so far, we've got nine songs in this album and no one on this podcast has said that this album is samesy in any way. Mm -mm. It is varied enough to keep you interested. And it also, uh, it keeps you entertained, but the jetpack race. If you listen, I mean, there's horns involved in that thing. There's a uh, there's, great funky bass line. Yeah. It's really, it's really catchy and it's really good. And like I said, it again, this guy, you could tell he's got experience covering other bands, other genres. Um, you know, when you look at, when you look at pirate metal versus anime music and, uh, you know, intros to uh, cartoons that he's covering, uh, I went through some of his YouTube videos. I mean, he's covering, he's doing a metal cover of Bon Jovi, I think. And there's uh, one just yeah. recently. Um, oh, he's he's got a few. He's got a few. He's got a, a like grungy, cut style uh, uh, metal cover of. Oh, jeez, the one that that it's not wanted. It's the other one that everyone knows from Bon Jovi, and the name is just escaping me at the moment. Oh well, uh, I did. I mean, just recently, two weeks ago, living he did, on a prayer. That's it. Living on, on a prayer. Okay, gotcha. Uh, he did a metal cover of a Wellerman Sea Shanty. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> he's part of an aca He's he contributed to an acapella version of the of uh, the Wellerman Sea Shanty. 
Uh, I think the one that this wasn't my first song of his that I heard, but I think the one that I remember hearing first was he and Caleb Hiles have a very awesome metal cover of uh, This is the Greatest Show from The Greatest Showman. Oh, nice. Very nice. So this guy's got his chops under him. He knows how to mix. Uh, I thought at first when I listened to Glory or Gold, I I picked up on how the album was produced. Like, he does a thing. I don't. I can't remember. I have to go back and listen to it again just to make sure. Maybe it's just the first song. But it seems like the instruments take more of a forefront sometimes than the vocals do, which that doesn't bother me. I think that sounds good. Uh, and I'm not you know, bagging on how he produced this or anything, but this it's, it's a a signature in my opinion of what he was wanting to do. Just like you said, he poured a lot of his time and a lot of his effort uh, into this album. And as an artist, I could see him making specific choices when it comes to the mix and producing of the album itself. It's fantastic so far. I'm having a good time. That does bring us to our final two songs of this particular uh, album, 10,000 Light Years and Final Frontier. Mark, if you would, please. Mm -hmm.
I assume that was just to set your ADD.
That might be the best thing I've heard all night. <laughs> I, I actually got up. I blasted that. I punched my kids. I started a mosh pit. <laughs> I ran, uh, well, I ran I to my neighbor. Laying, I ran I to my neighbor's laying, house. I started picking up chains. <laughs> we'll start laying odds on whether that was going to be the last one or not. <laughs> I, I was like, this guy does covers. Just be ready because it's roller coaster time. Mark Radlich is saw the squirrel and he's chasing after it. <laughs> covers, covers, covers. And that was the Metal Hammer of Doom ADD riddled end of the show medley. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have even let us actually get through the album in particular and then maybe have gone off. You just had to. <laughs> nope. Just couldn't help yourself. Oh, it's hilarious. Here, I'll give my final thoughts here. I really enjoyed this. This was a this was a, a very good pick, Robert. I'm glad we did it. I had a lot of fun with this. I will continue to give this guy some attention because uh, I really enjoy his stuff. Uh, I, again, I'm not. I have to you know, throw it out there. If you feel like doing another you know, full on album of his, his every villain cover cover ever is really good. Okay. I mean, it, it's worth it for his covers of Hellfire and Be Prepared Alone. Uh, yeah, we can probably sneak that on the schedule somewhere. Okay, just as a thought. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not pitching it at the moment. Mm -hmm. I got it. I got it. Well, I can tell you. I mean, I, I am glad, Mark, that you went and found some other stuff that he had done, because. At first, I was like, this is the same guy that we've been listening to. I thought maybe for a second there, I <laughs> uh, thought he went and I, just started grabbing Bon Jovi covers that were completely unrelated to the album. But no, he stuck He stuck with the uh, artist. And uh, it, I think the uh, for, for the record, I'm 99% sure that Living on a Prayer cover also features the very talented Caleb Hiles. It does. Okay. Also, 16 in Mono. 16 in Mono was also on Wanted Dead or Alive and Live in La Vida Loca. Yeah, he does the he does a lot of their guitar work if they, depending on the timing that they have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, it, it sound, again, fantastic artist in my opinion. This guy has uh, a, a great uh, a, a great litany of stuff he's already done, and I can see him easily uh, doing a lot. There's so much that he can do, uh, and can only get better when it comes to uh, if he does another Galactic Kraken album. Which I don't know. I mean, Winfrey, this is obviously just released, but has he, he is, said um, he is currently working with one of the producers for the band Three Days Grace on some more stuff? Okay. So I don't, I don't have a date for you or anything on what he might be doing next, but he is absolutely working on more original content. Yeah, I'm sure that since this just released recently, he's probably focusing on trying to promote this and and then maybe looking to to do some more stuff in the future, uh, but. I do want to correct myself. I may have misspoke earlier that uh, Ninja Brian is was part of a band called Ninja Sex Party. And if you find them, Mark, if I queued you up right now for potentially a sponsor, would that really make you upset? Mm -mm. Oh, let's do that then. I, I wonder if there's a music service where you could potentially find Ninja Sex Party. There is! Oh, <laughs> You can stream Ninja Sex Party or any, or Galactic Kraken or anything else from Jonathan Young or any of the bands that we review here on the Metal Hammer of Doom by clicking the link in our description here. Get AmazonMusic.com slash W2M Network. If you click on it and you fill out the information and you sign up, fully sign up for a free 30 days, you'll have 30 days. Uh, you don't have to pay. That's what free means. Mm. And you can stream all the music you want. Very nice. Very nice. Well, Robert Winfrey, I, I sent it over to you for your final thoughts on this album. Uh, again, this is a guy whose work I've enjoyed quite a bit for a variety of reasons for quite some time now. I'm happy to kind of spotlight him any way I can when it comes to stuff like this. And I was... I'm always leery, again, when you get someone who is known for stuff like covers when they finally do something unique and individual and, again, original... That's you're, there's a little bit of a roll of the dice there, not just for them as professionals, but you know for the for us as listeners. Like, okay, does does this individual actually have a lot of have the the stuff to make a full uh, unique album, mm -hmm. or is you know or you know stick to covers? And I'm was very very pleasantly surprised by just how good this is. Uh, 
Ten Thousand Light. We didn't actually talk about the last couple of songs, but <laughs> Ten Thousand Light Years is a really nice ballad, and Final Frontier has a really. It's a little bit back to kind of the Sabaton Manowar influence. It cover it. Uh, but it's also not quite as hopeless as some of the lyrics might make you think it is if all you're doing was reading them. <laughs> uh, it's, nor is it as angry as it maybe could have been. So it, kudos to him on the writing department when it comes to that. This could have been... A, that, that song in particular could have been a real miss, and instead it's still a pretty darn good song. Yeah, it's solid. So I, I enjoy the album. I hope he does. I, you know, I hope he does more. I have largely enjoyed pretty much everything he's done. So uh, kudos to him uh, on the success of this album. And you out there listening, if you've enjoyed this, listen to it on Spotify. Buy it if you're so inclined. Listen to it on Amazon Music. We just gave you a link for free because we're good people like that. And the good people of Am- at Amazon Music are happy to throw a few bucks our way. Not a lot, but a few. In fact, if you guys really, you know, let them know that we helped you out, they might help us out more financially. That would be really nice. <laughs> Uh, we would like to get paid at some point for this. <laughs> just, right. you know, just kind of as a side. So, again, I enjoy the album. I largely enjoy Jonathan Young's work. I'm very glad you guys decided to kind of take a flyer with me on this one. So, thank you to both of you for featuring this on the Metal Hammer of Doom, the most popular show on the Rattlech and Broadcasting Network by a non-trivial margin. <laughs> That's right, damn it. <laughs> well, if you've enjoyed Robert Winfrey, um, he won't be on next week. Uh, next week, I am spending my birthday with Jesse Starcher, and we are, <laughs> and we are going to be reviewing Bongzilla, Weed Sconson. Ooh, boy. But then Jesse's going on vacation. So Robert Winfrey will be back Wednesday, June 9th. Can you do Wednesday? I forget. Uh, yeah, Wednesday should be fine. So did you cover something on Wednesdays? Not live. Okay. So Wednesday, Robert Winfrey will be back. It'll be just me and Robert Winfrey, and we will be doing another Simpsons-inspired band. No, this time Uh-oh. it isn't. <laughs> this Uh-oh. isn't <laughs> Howdy Doodly. Uh, we have done them before. No, first this all, is... For, hang on. For, hang on. The band you're referencing is Oakley Doakley, first yeah, of all. Yeah, sorry. Oakley Doakley. Uh, leave me alone. My tongue hurts. Um, <laughs> it's not Oakley Doakley this time. This time it's Dr. Colossus, which is a stoner doom metal band. <sighs> And I'm really, of... really sorry. I cannot be here for that. <laughs> I really I'm, am. I'm, I'm really, it. really sorry. You can't be here for that too. Damn it. Um, I mean, the other choice is I could, I could move it, and we could do a Treyu instead. But no, you know. no, don't, don't shift anything more around. I don't want to add any more stress. But I don't think uh, Winfrey would enjoy doing an Atreyu album. I think he would much prefer Dr. Colossus. I'm yes. a stupid moron with an ugly face and a big butt <laughs> and a butt smell. I like to kiss my own butt. <laughs> At a bare minimum, I think I'll have more to say about this one than I would in the Treyu album. No oh offense to a Treyu. Yeah. That album title was fucking classic. God. It is a great line. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, so yeah, that's June 9th. Um, Jesse will be back the following week, and we will be and uh, we will be talking Green Jelly Garbage Band Kids. Uh, June 23rd is Fear Factory Aggression Continuation. And then... Um, we're taking a break on June 30th, but you'll get an old Metal Hammer of Doom from the archives, a really old one, uh, one you know from from like the first year that we did this. Testament: Dark Roots of Earth. Remember that one, Jesse? Yeah, that's that's some old school stuff right there. Yeah, that was when Robert Cooper used to be on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I, Oop. I really Oop. wish he had died. We're actually, huh. actually going to get two that week because I'm on vacation for a couple of days, so I got some stuff. Um, uh, from the archives on days I can't record. So you're actually going to get two Metal Hammer of Dooms that week. One is Black Country Communion, like our second or third ever show that we ever did. And uh, that was a Robert Cooper pick. And then the aforementioned Testament Dark Roots of Earth. So that's what's going on for the Metal Hammer of Doom in June. Uh, as far as the other plugs go, myself and Robert Winfrey reviewed Castlevania today. Tomorrow, uh, Ronnie Time and I are... Had by all. <laughs> Ronnie and I will be reviewing the first season of Invincible on Amazon Prime. Uh, Chris Sheehan and I reviewed Man of Steel by my, Brian Michael Bendis. Um, Jesse Starcher hit me with a chair and took his show back for one night only. So, 
So it goes back to being edited and having your nonsense cut out appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. No, I had yeah. to do this live. Damn it. Yep. No. So there was no. Well, we we had a conversation about that. We. Uh, I said, you know, as much as like, you know, Jesse's argument to me was, if I do the comic book show, I really want to put time and energy into it, and I and I like doing the gag reels and I like doing the editing, but I don't have that kind of time because I'm essential. Okay, I get it. You know, it's a lot easier for me to kind of listen to an album, come on here, jibber jabber about it for an hour, and then be done than it is to go back and edit. I'm like, okay, fine. But he deigned to lower himself to my level and just went live to tape on Monday, and, and we had a fun time. Immediately took a shower afterwards. <laughs> Never be Got all that live stink off of me. I, I, know, the, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, Roberto Duran once punched a horse. We're going to talk that about it. True. <laughs> he also won a title by punching a guy in the dick. We're also gonna talk, true. We're going to talk all about it Thursday night on our inaugural episode of The Four Kings of Boxing, Chapter 1, Roberto Duran, The Horse Killer. On Friday, um, we've got our re-airing of Maleficent, and then, uh, in theory, Jeff Slobodal will be back on the show to review Without Remorse. Saturday, Jesse's got a syndicated source material, What If Spider-Man Had Kept His Cosmic Powers. And then Robert Winfrey did his homework, finally. And he uploaded uh, his very first, everyone, not his the first one he ever did, but the first one that's airing on this network. Uh, I am, for the record, I am listing in my little intro piece to all of those what uh, episode number it, it was originally. Uh, so this is Everyone Loves a Bad Guy, Disney Villains Part 1. Part 2 will be the following Sunday. And that leads us into Cruella Week. We've got Disney Great Parodies Volume 1, Mickey's Inferno, which is a parody of Dante's Inferno, which seemed amazing, and we needed to talk about it. We'll have a damn you Hollywood for Cruella, and Robert Winfrey will try to slit his wrist during that review. I um, make no promises. <laughs> yeah, you may hear a suicide live on the air. One never knows. Um, no, no, no. What you'll, what you'll hear is me doing that in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, I looked up the hang on, hang on. I looked up the runtime to Cruella. It's two and a half hours. Oh, oh, oh God. Jeez. I don't know who thinks that's a good idea. <laughs> Gosh. My son is gonna leave the theater and punch a baby. Um, that is well, as rough. long as he leaves the theater first. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna spend the whole day Monday at the movie theater. I'm gonna go to an early showing of. Uh, Quiet Place Part 2 because we're reviewing that that same week as well not with Mark because Mark is a big weenie but myself uh, Alexis Haina and Jason Teasley I believe will be getting together to talk about A Quiet Place Part 2 there was and then no time I'll go for from me that. to do it I'm gonna go from that smooth, crisp 90 minute film production into Emma Stone as Cruella The God. Devil Wears Disney Shoes I mean, the devil it, is Disney, and we all know it. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, wh theoretically that show should air sometime on my birthday, June second. Meanwhile, Jesse and I are going to get fucking stoned and listen to Bongzilla, mm, buddy. Yes, yeah, I might. I might recount some college stories on there. I don't know. You never know. Um, on Thursday, myself and Chris Bailey, and possibly Harry Broadhurst, um, but definitely not Chris Sheehan because he can't count to know AEW. He fucking hates Cody Rhodes. <laughs> Not a fan. We will be reviewing AEW Double or Nothing, and in the evening time, myself and Sean Coma will be reviewing 101. Uh, we're doing an on trial for 101 Dalmatians. That's it. Um, if you want to know what's in the archives, just go ahead and look. We did a whole bunch of shit last week. It's all there for you to enjoy. Uh, Robert Winfrey, your plug, sir. Well, Mark mentioned our review of Castlevania. We've reviewed all four seasons of Castlevania. You can find those in the archives. Uh, a partially good time was had by all on some of those shows. <laughs> Boy, did we bury season three appropriately. Um, we, let's see, where else can you find me? I cover professional wrestling for 411 Mania a few nights a week. Mondays, I cover AEW's Dark Elevation, because no one else will. Wednesdays, I cover MLW's, whatever they're doing. They're currently re-airing old episodes of Underground, because they're getting set for their relaunch on July 10th. I also cover because no one else will. And Fridays, I cover WWE SmackDown. Also because no one else will. God, I, I am a doormat. I am just <laughs> a doormat. 
Just walk all over me. Uh, so you can find me doing that. I am the host of the 411 Ground and Pound MMA podcast, if you're interested in the wide, wacky, wonderful world of mixed martial arts. That show airs Sundays, usually Sunday evenings or early Monday mornings, kind of depending on timing. This last week, we did a review of UFC on ESPN Plus 46 and an erroneous preview of UFC on ESPN Plus 47. I did not realize this is the one of the like three Saturdays a year that the UFC does not have an event going. But it is, and will be, so I will wind up doing, I'll wind up doing another preview of it this coming week, and talk about whatever news breaks, I'm sure something interesting will happen. It's the wide, wacky, wonderful world of mixed martial arts, something's always happening. And Mark mentioned the stuff we have upcoming, Quiet Place Part 2, Bruella. Um, I've thrown this out there about everyone loves a bad guy, I'm going to throw it out there not here for you all to listen to. If you listen to that sh- to the re-airings of that show and you kind of enjoy it, please let me know. I've occasionally kicked around the notion of bringing it back as a once-a-month thing uh, because I got to have a lot of good conversations that came out of that. And some of those conversations are worth revisiting now that we're all, we're all a little older, we're all a little wiser. And in some cases, the mediums have changed. New stuff has been added. There's a whole episode where I bash Marvel villains, and I'd kind of like to do that again because they still suck at writing villains for the most part. <laughs> So there's all that. There's I gotta find a time to re-air the epic two-part debate that was had between Mark and Pat Mullen about whether or not the Joker or Victor Von Doom was the superior comic villain. <laughs> and if you go by the numbers, the answer is Victor Von Doom. <laughs> uh, so just if you happen to be listening to that and enjoying it. Um, let me know. Uh, you know. Give a comment on any of the platforms that you're listening to it on, if you if you can. Share it around. Give it a thumbs up. Um, tell me on Twitter. I'm at Winfrey MMA. Uh, any of those things. I that was a show that I put a lot of my time and energy and my passion into, and I stopped doing it because it was time to be done doing it for a bit. But I don't know. It it's an there's still something of an itch there. I'm not quite sure how to scratch yet. I suppose the way to phrase that. But those will be rearing. I'm having a lot of fun listening to some of those old ones, recording new intros for them, and appropriately editing them down. Good. The, D- the Disney Villain Part 2 one needed a full, like, ten minutes cut from the beginning for a variety of reasons. <laughs> Man, the blog talk era. Oh, gosh. We were I some mean, meandering, it. talking motherfuckers. I'll tell you that much. Listening to the old Long, long Road to Ruins. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, Chris Bailey makes fun of me and calls me the Greg the Hammer Valentine because I tend to kind of slowly get into the, the topic of conversation. Um, I was positively Ray fucking Mysterio compared to what I was back then. Oh man, uh, dude, and not to not to even mention like audio issues where mm. or somebody trying to call in and all of a sudden they drop. It's a lot of fun to hear the technical problems we had. Uh, and knock on wood, Skype has been. Man, I can remember back in the day getting just a Skype recorder was. Uh, you know, you had to pull teeth just to try and do something like that because I was attempting that when I was doing my show in 2014, 2015, and now it's uh, completely different. It's so much easier. And boy, so- we have been doing this a long time for as little success as we have. <laughs> we are it's some a labor. Old, we are some old. We have been around for a long time, podcasting guys. Yeah, labor and- of love. But I mean, and we've we've learned a lot. And thank goodness technology has gotten a little bit better because I would, oh man, blog talk broke us. We were like, okay, we're done with blog talk. I, I, I mean, remember the episode it happened because it was Mark and I talking. Oh no. We were trying to get set up. We were doing, and it, it wasn't working. It wasn't working. It would call in and then it would drop. And Mark finally just messaged me and said, screw it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh fun fun it was i i was literally on the call when we did, when we when the straw broke the camel's back <laughs> that was though it's funny you mentioned it as like a straw that broke the camel's back because it started that had to have happened between january and february because the first one that we the big crossover episode was black panther and that was february but i remember reviewing do you remember this jesse we, we reviewed the two-part metallica album um, that came out and one of them the audio was so bad I was like I can't do this anymore and I stopped talking <laughs> do you remember that? oh yeah yeah that was yeah, the Ian Coop 
I, I, I'm just so glad that, you know, there's this option. I mean, I, I know that Spreaker is somehow involved with blog talk, but I, I don't, for some reason it's like they, this platform is way better. Uh, so I'm, Hey, you know, before we talk too much shop, we should probably end the podcast. Oh, that. <laughs> well, I guess. Yeah, Jesse, guess do your so. plugs and let, let's, let's go. Yeah, Winfrey, you didn't have anything else, right? I covered everything I am particularly inclined to cover at the moment. Right. Thank you all very much. You can like the Rod- the Rattlechim Broadcasting Network on Facebook. The good way to stay up to date on the schedule, even though Mark never updates it after posting it the first time, and it <laughs> always changes. Ah, <laughs> uh, the glories of... Uh, the theater business, it seems like, anymore. Well, uh, listen, ladies and gentlemen, go check out Unspoken Issues. It's a 90s comics podcast. Uh, uh, sooner or later, we're going to do this like 12-part epic on Savage Dragon and dedicate it to Mark Radlich. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, that's, the just best, be- that, that's the best thing you've said all night, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, recently, Dean Compton and I did a episode on X-Men number 11, which was Jim Lee's final X-Men issue. Uh, upcoming here pretty soon, which should be next Wednesday, we will be talking about WCW number one. And you want to talk about some <laughs> hijinks that occurs. And uh, it takes you back to 1991, early 92 WCW. PN News, Arn Anderson, Barry Windham, um, Stinger. Uh, there is some great stuff. Lex Luger's champion, all right? But the best part about that show is is Dean and I talking about the logistics of comic books and wrestling not even meeting anywhere in the middle because no within way. two within no two way. months in two months Lex well, excuse me when when that show or when that uh, issue hits the stands I think within two weeks or maybe it's about a month later Lex Luger's gone from the company and they ended issue one as Lex Luger being the champion. Now what are you going to do? Well, is it episode? It's like issue two, Cactus Jack trying to set off a bomb on a boat. <laughs> That's issue three. Issue two is more standard wrestling fare, and we talk a little bit about that. But issue three gets issue three goes off of the rails on the Bruise Cruise. So uh, I would have loved to have covered that whole series. It's twelve issues long, but we only stuck with issue number one, and we had a good time. Dean Compton knows his wrestling, uh, so it was fun to talk to him about that and. You know, just travel back to the times when I was sitting on my mom's waterbed at at uh, six oh five p.m. waiting for WCW to come on the television with my eight GI Joe, so I could have a, a six star match classic. That's right. Um, so, what did you do yesterday then? <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> uh, then uh, let's see. Uh, we have uh, the upcoming. Uh, well, no, upcoming. We have the tripped up trivia coming up in June. But check out our first ever episode where we got to fit, uh, we got to pit four contestants against each other uh, for a trivia thirty question trivia game. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I tried to edit the episode so that people listening to it could play along. And the theme was science fiction. So if you're into sci fi, you want to play a game with us. Uh, it's it's right there for you. We tried to keep it evergreen so you could listen to it anytime you want and just play along. Uh, so check that out. I think that's it, Mark Radlich. I am done talking. All right. Thank you for joining us here in the Metal Hammer of Doom for Robert, for Robert Winfrey, for Jesse Starcher. I'm Mark Radlich. Be well, be safe, and behave. <laughs>